morning, Cross Point Church. How's everybody doing? Wow, what a response. Man, uh, this morning as I, was, uh, as I was sort of meeting and greeting everyone, someone showed me the radar, and we've got some heavy rain coming, and they said, keep it short, Pastor David. <laughs> we've got to get out of here before that gets here. And I said, no, I think I'll just keep us longer and let it pass through. How about that? So anyway, no, I tell you, I don't know about you, but this pollen is killing me, Amen. Uh, I know Linnell has had the crud for several days, and, and uh, yesterday I was, uh, I was outside, and I turned, and I walked into a, an azalea bush, right? And this big cloud of yellow just went puff, you know, and, and I knew it was over. And so this morning at 1 o'clock, I woke up coughing my head off, and so uh, I guess here it comes, right? And so maybe this rain will put a damper on some of that pollen, and we'll... We'll get over all this stuff. It's just that time of the year, but I was talking to Josh Wilson this morning as well, and I said, you know what's just beautiful about the pollen? He says, nothing. I said, no, there's something beautiful about the pollen. I said, the flowers, amen? I mean, if it wasn't for all the flowers, we wouldn't have the pollen, but if we didn't have the pollen, there wouldn't be flowers. So there you go. So just a little brightness this morning as we think about all of that. But it's good to see you here this morning. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about diving into the message here this morning. Um, I want to invite you to go ahead and turn with me, if you will, to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. We're going to be going there this morning and, and walking through a passage that I think is one that uh, really helps us to understand a lot that we need to know about our Christian life. And so we're going to be looking at this this morning. I think Galatians is such a... It's such an interesting book, and I believe that the reason I think that, the, the reason I feel that it's such a, an interesting book is because I believe the churches of Galatia were interesting. If you've ever studied this, if you've ever studied what was going on there, you realize that the churches of Galatia were, it was a collection of churches where you had both Jewish converts and Gentile converts uh, living out their faith together. And so you had those that were of Jewish background who had come to know Christ Jesus and those who were Gentiles. And if you know anything about the relationship between those two, it was, it was not always healthy. It wasn't good. But, but you had this situation where you had these people who were united together in Christ Jesus. And it was, a, it was really a beautiful thing. But something began to happen. Uh, there, there, there sort of arose this theological crisis and, uh, and so the Apostle Paul, as he's writing this letter, you begin to see what he's, uh, he's writing for as he addresses these theological implications or these theological misunderstandings, if you will. There was a group called the Judaizers who were teaching that you must first become a Jew to be a Christian. And this was a, a heresy that Paul was addressing in his letter and he was writing, he was saying no. And so what you begin to see as you read through the book of Galatians is it's a letter that really centers in on justification by faith alone. And so he presents that to the Galatians as a, as, as a bit of truth that they need to understand. And it's really neat what you begin to see as you read through uh, this book. And so that's just a little bit of background there. Uh, as we prepare to dive into this. But in the last chapter, this is where I want us to go today because I think it's really interesting and I, and I think it's something that's going to be encouraging but also challenging to us as most of God's Word usually is, right? I mean, you read through there and it's like, ow, you know, should have worn my steel-toed boots today, right? And then you read a little bit further and there's a word of encouragement where the, the Word of God just lifts you up. And, and, and so that's, that's typical of, of reading through the Word of God. And so today we, we see a passage that's going to do both of these things, I'm sure, as we sort of uh, walk through this together. But um, uh, it's here in this text that we're going to be looking at here today that Paul begins to address this issue of Christian service in a very unique way. It's here that he addresses basically two things, two things that we need to understand. One is bearing with one another. Uh, and 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 bearing with one uh, bearing one another's burdens, not bearing with one another, but bearing. That, there's a big difference there, isn't it? When I first said that, I thought that just sounds perfect, and then it just didn't quite sound right. So bearing with one another is like I've got to put up with you, right? 
And then the other one is uh, bearing with your burdens or bearing your burdens. That means when you're in a difficult place, I'm helping you out. There's, there's a big difference there. I need to make sure you keep me straight today that I don't bring that one because that's not what this text is talking about. It's talking about bearing with each other's burdens. And so this is one of the things that we want to look at today. And the reality is, is that if you're involved in church life, if you are walking uh, through life with other believers and other Christians, there's going to be days where some of those Christians are going through some very difficult times, right? And there's going to be days where life for you is just glorious. And so as, as we walk through life together, it becomes very important that we understand that we have a tremendous need to be there for one another and to help carry the load, so to speak. And so that becomes hugely important. The other thing that we're going to be looking at as we look in this text is the fact that the Word of God challenges us not to grow weary in doing that, okay? So not to grow tired in, in helping one another. And the reality is, oftentimes as we do ministry, as we, as we carry out our life, just living life with each other and doing life together, uh, there are times where we just sort of get... Uh, to a place where we feel sort of burnt out. Now, I mean, I'll just be honest with you and transparent. There are days in my life where I just don't want to help you, okay? I'm going to just be honest. You know, there's just days. I just don't feel like another phone call or another text. But the Word of God challenges me not to grow weary in doing good, right? And so I have to be, as a, as a man of God, not just a pastor. It's not about a job that I have, amen? It's not about me having the job of the pastor. It's about me being a believer and a follower of Christ Jesus. And what Christ has placed on my life, just like he's placed on your life, is that we are to walk through this together. And in doing that, we are not to... Uh, to grow weary and so I think there's going to be some things we're going to learn today about safeguarding against weariness okay or safeguarding against just being burnt out and helping others and so that's what Paul's addressing here today and that's what we want to look at as we as we dive into this passage so with that being said I want to invite you to stand with me here today uh, we stand together uh, for the purpose of reading God's word uh, together, but also just honoring God in doing that. You know, it's, uh, it, 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 it's remarkable how um, for, for many years we would stand to sing and worship, uh, but we wouldn't stand to sing, uh, and I mean, we wouldn't stand to honor God in the reading of his word. And so that's something I started this year. Uh, sort of as a, a, a new thing for me. Uh, I don't know if you're enjoying getting the exercise of standing and sitting, but I think it's something that's important for us to do as a, as a faith family to just honor God in this way as well. And so let's read this together, and then we'll pray here. Uh, starting with verse 2 of Galatians chapter 6, uh, Paul is writing, and he says these words. He says, Bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. He says, For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. Now skip down, if you will, to, uh, just to, for the sake of saving some time, and let's look at verses 9 and 10. He says this, he says, and let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. Let's pray together this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, Lord, we do thank you for this time together as a faith family. And Father, we recognize that uh, God, we are here collectively gathered in this building to worship you together, to lift up our voices in song and adoration and prayer and just give thanks to you for your presence in our life and for the things that you are doing all around us. We are thankful, Father, for the life change that happens every single day as we, as we see you move and work in the lives of many. And God, we thank you for your son, Christ, Jesus Christ, who, who died on the cross for the sake of our sins. And Father, we just thank you for salvation. We thank you for grace. We thank you for mercy. Lord, all of these things we are just so blessed to have from you. And so, Father, we thank you for that. We thank you, God, for your word. Your word is, is there to instruct us, but to encourage us and to lift us up, God, to know how we are to 
to better live our life as followers of Christ Jesus. And so, Father, today, we dive into your word and we ask that you would help us to understand and to glean from your word what you would have us to, to learn. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And Lord, it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. And I think while I was praying, I heard that rain coming. So, so here we go. We'll see. I, I don't know. I, I'll just listen if it's still just thundering and storming. I'll just keep preaching. How about that? So this is all in God's hands today. I don't know about you. But, but anyway, we're going to dive into this passage, and we're going to look at this. And, and, I, and I love what Paul is saying here. I wish for the sake of time we would have the time to just uh, to dive into all of this. I love the fact that Paul has challenged the church in such theological ways uh, all the way through verses 1 through uh, 4 and, and some very deep things. In 5, he begins to make some transitions. He talks about the freedoms that we have in Christ Jesus. But as he's approaching the end of his letter, he, he begins to focus on this other issue that we're looking at today. And it's this issue of bearing with one another's burdens. In other words, helping each other out, serving one another, being there for one another, doing life together as followers and, 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 and just uh, believers in Christ Jesus. And so, uh, you know, when we look at this, we begin to see that he's talking about serving one another. We don't see that word serve. We see the word bear with one another and when we talk about burdens we typically think about those things that are really hard on us the loss of a loved one would be a burden a weight that we would experience or uh, maybe the loss of a job or going through difficult circumstances where we find ourselves in a place of despair and so those things would be typically what we might think of when we think of this word burden but we begin to see as we read through this chapter as we look at verse 6 in its totality and especially in light of what we read in verses 9 and 10 that the apostle Paul is is talking about this this idea this truth if you will of just coming along beside each other and pouring into one another's life we have scripture that teaches us that as iron sharpens iron so as one man should another and so we are to come along beside each other uh, discipleship would no doubt play into this uh, just serving one another in ways that need to in ways that we can do good toward one another would come into play with this and so we we see this happening in this text where Paul is, is, is sort of uh, talking about this, this need to serve one another, to be there for one another. And you know, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking there's a whole host of reasons why we might serve one another. You know, why is it that we would, we would want to even do that? And I think a lot of those things are just things that sort of come from the, the natural man. I mean, for some of us, we're very passionate about certain things. And so passion can be one of those reasons why we serve one another. Some of us are gifted in a very special way, and, and some of us are just passionate about pouring into others lives and so because of that passion we are driven to be people who are constantly looking at others and seeing how we can come along beside them and help and so passion is one of those reasons compassion is another reason compassion is having empathy toward someone because you see a person in need and so it's not necessarily that you may have passion to serve one another but you have a great deal of compassion for others and as you look over and you see someone who is in need you 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 suddenly find yourself wanting to help because your soul is stirred and you you feel for the person that you see in need and so oftentimes we step into a place of serving one another because of passion if it's not i mean not, if it's not passion it's compassion that we find ourselves Another reason, and this one may be not such a glorious one, but another reason that we may serve others or serve the church or serve Jesus may be from a sense of guilt. Maybe we see others serving so faithfully and we, we start looking around and we think, you know, I, I don't really get into all this mess, but, 
but I mean, I, I, I probably should be helping, right? And so we, we see this, and sometimes guilt or conviction sort of drives us to stepping into a place of service, and I would just say, whatever the Lord needs to do to get you to do that, then, you know, maybe guilt's what he's using on you right now. And so, uh, you know, but guilt is one of those driving forces that sort of causes us to serve. And then sometimes... And I just praise God for all of you because of this, but sometimes just pure necessity dictates our willingness to serve. Uh, this would be a situation where you're walking in to check your kids in, and they say, we don't have any workers. We need you in here. And they pull you out of the hallway right into the classroom, right? And then there you are serving, and you've never even seen a child before this day. But, but there you are, and you're serving in children's ministry for the first time because of what? There's a necessity. There's a need. And oftentimes, at least in that ministry, there is a great need because it takes so many people to pour into the children of our church. And so knowing these reasons of why we might serve the church or serve one another or bear with each other's burdens is a great starting place for us. We can use these things to sort of filter everything else through as we begin to dive into the Word of God and look at this text and try to understand what it is that Paul is, is speaking about as we look at this. And so knowing this, let's continue to walk through our text and let's look at what it is that Paul is saying here. And I believe he's saying something very interesting right off the bat. I mean, starting in verse 2, he just comes right out with it and he says this. He says, bearing, or excuse me, bear one another's burdens, and look at this, and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so I want you to know that, that there is something that's in this, this truth or this idea of, of serving one another or being there for one another that is connected to this relationship that we have in Christ Jesus and no doubt a desire of his heart. And so we see this, this command, if you will, to bear with one another's as they go through this time of burden, as they find themselves in a time of need, we as the church are to come along beside them and to help them. And then I love how Paul references the law of Christ. Now, the law of Christ is not something that we see typically in the Bible. It's not mentioned a lot there. And, but most theologians, as they study this, they feel as though Paul is pointing back to uh, where Jesus was asked, by the spiritual leaders of his day, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus would say to them, well, love God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. And then Jesus would also continue by saying the second one is much like it when he says, love your neighbor as yourself. And so here Paul says this. Paul says as he's writing to the Galatians, you need to bear with one another. You need to bear with one another's burdens. You need to help tote the load in their life. You need to be there for one another. You need to be walking with one another. I'm telling you, Christianity is not meant to be a solo sport. Do you hear that? We are, we are, we are intended to be brought together with other believers and others who are following Christ. And as we walk through life together, as we deal with life, as it is thrown at us, we have uh, brothers and we have sisters who help us and come along beside us. And so this is the point that Paul is making. But he points also to the reality that Jesus once said these words love God with everything you've got and love people too in the same way love people too if you don't love people you'll probably never help them with their burdens I mean it's just the truth right if we don't develop a heart for others if we just say stay in our self-centered world if we just sort of camp out in our own little in our own little place we'll never be the people that God wants to us to be and we'll never be able to serve the world like Christ would have us to serve the world and it's real easy just to stay there but that's not what the word of God teaches us does it and so he says here to bear with one another and then he says here and I love this because this throws a bit of a challenge uh, me and Jason Van Nuss were talking this past Wednesday about 
about when you see something and you don't quite understand it, it should force us to go and study the Word of God and to really try to seek the answers in which we see. Well, today we have a passage that sort of throws this kink into what Paul says. So in, in verse 2, what Paul says is, he says, bear with one another's burdens and fulfill the, the law of Christ. So he says, he throws it out there. We need to be there for one another. But look at verse 5. Did you catch it when we were reading it? He says in verse 5, he says, for each will have to bear his own load. Wait a minute now. You just said that, you know, we, we're to be there for one another, and then a few verses later you say, no, uh, you'll have to bear your own load. And, and so you see this, and it seemingly seems contradictory to one another, doesn't it? I mean, you just told us to bear with one another's burdens and now you're saying no he, he's got to bear his own load so what does this mean what is it that Paul is trying to help us to understand what is it that the word of God is teaching us as we look at this this need to be servants of Christ Jesus living out our life together doing life together and being there for one another uh, on the surface it looks like these two contradict themselves uh, do we bear uh, with each other or do we do, is each person on his own but as we study the context of this we begin to realize that both of these statements are true in fact just because it's the word of God we should know it's true right but we begin to see that it's a both and it's not one or the other he's not saying one thing and then a few verses later he's forgotten what he said and so he makes a different statement he's basically saying it kind of comes down to doing both and so here we see this where he says bear with one another's burdens but also understand your responsibility to bear your own load as well you see it's not a it's not a handout it's a hand up and that's a huge thing for us to think about i want you to picture in your mind if you will um an, an elderly man in a third world country and and, and this elderly man, he's got, a, he's got a big sack of grain that he has gotten from somewhere. And this, this elderly man is carrying this sack of grain. And he, he, he is so heavy that it, the weight of that grain that he is carrying on his shoulder is, is enough to just cause him to crumble. I mean, he's, he's about to fall and he's, he's elderly and he's trying to get home so he can feed his family with this bag of grain and suddenly a younger man is over here and he's standing here and as he notices the old man he realizes the burden of the weight that is on his shoulder and so he runs over to the elderly man and he picks up a rod that's laying on the ground and he runs it through the knot of the bag that is tied together and together they lift this up to where the old man can now head on to his house but he's carrying the load he's helping to carry the load that this old man was once having to bear all on his own but now he's bearing the load together with this man all the while while this man is headed to his same place his same destination headed to his family that he may feed them this is the picture that the apostle paul is painting and this is the picture that the word of God has painted for us as the church to be able to see and realize that we're not in this thing alone. We are in this thing together. And there will be days. It may not be today. Today may be a great day for you. It may be a day. It may be the best month you've ever had in your life and you may be finding yourself rejoicing to the heavens and you may be finding yourself today walking and just thinking that man life couldn't be any better but I can promise you there's somebody in this room that can't say the same thing and they need you in their life. I need you in my life from time to time. And you need me in your life from time to time. We need each other. And I believe this is what the Word of God is teaching us about how really the church should look as we think about serving one another. Now let's look at the, the verses 9 and 10 because I think this is where it sort of is tied all together. And I love what, what the Word of God is teaching us here. I, I wish, like I said, I wish we had time just to to do this whole chapter maybe one day we'll just do a series on this but it, it, it's such 
good stuff that we look at here. But we see in verse 9 and 10, we see these words again. And I want to just sort of read these again because as we think about the, the, the weight of carrying someone else's burden, especially in light of maybe what we're toting already ourselves, we understand that uh, if this goes on for too long, we're going to grow weary, we're going to grow tired. We may even come to those moments in our life where we feel like we can no longer do it. And so Paul addresses that. The Word of God deals with that. It's as if he knows and he understands, and he does, what we may be thinking as we read through the first part of the text that we've been looking at. And so we see here in verse 9 and 10, he says this. He says, And let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone especially to those who are, of the, who are of the household of faith. Now here the Apostle Paul probably understood better than anyone. He probably understood better than anyone how exhausting spiritual battle was. If you read through the life of Paul, you can see real quickly that he came up against so much as a man of God. I mean, here's a guy who everywhere he went, there was somebody threatening his life. There was somebody who was stoning him and leaving him from dead. There were moments in his life when he was shipwrecked. And no doubt this man would have known that he was fighting a spiritual battle. And so he understands that probably better than any of us in this room here. But he also understood how emotionally and physically exhausting ministry can be. Because it can be. It can be extremely exhausting, both emotionally and physically. And so in the end of this, this letter that he's written to these churches, this collection of churches in Galatia, as he ends his words on sin and worldliness and all these things, these theological things that he's, he's sort of pointed out, and he continues in talking about the freedoms of Christ, he comes to this place toward the end of his letter where he encourages us not to grow weary in doing good. The reality is this. I bet you that Paul, there were many times that Paul would have thought, man, is this really worth it? I'm sure that Paul, as he was walking from village to village and town to town sharing the gospel and people were throwing rocks at him and stoning him and, and, and leaving him for dead, he had to have had in his mind the thought, is it worth it to keep doing this? I mean, Jesus, you got this on your own, right? I mean, you're all powerful. I'm not. I'm about broken here, okay? Okay. And so, Jesus, you're just going to have to take it from here because I can't take this anymore. Of all people that we see in Scripture, the Apostle Paul probably understands that better than any of us. And so he writes these words. Do not grow weary in doing good because he says in due time, in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. What a word for us as a church to think about the hardships that we go through, to think about the, the tough times that we have to endure, to think about all of that that we go through, not only as a church, but as individual followers of Christ, each and every day living out our life and the hardships that we face and the emotional distress that we have to endure and the physical challenges that we have from just being tired. Have you ever been tired? Have you ever been exhausted? Have you thought, man, I need to sleep in today, right? Have you ever been there? I've been there many a times. It only lasts about three hours, and then the old man syndrome kicks in, and I get up, right? But sometimes you just need to rest. Sometimes the greatest need in your life is rest. But you never need to give up in doing good. Because you are making a difference in this world as a follower of Christ who is doing good. Don't ever give up. And so Paul here, as he's, as he's just 
throwing this out there, he says, let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. He says in verse 10, so then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially those who are of the household of faith. I realize that there's probably a number of people that are sitting in this room who have been serving for years and have maybe taking a break or taking a step back just because you're tired. I realize that. I'm tired. I've been at this for 20 years now. I just realized, I was counting up uh, just this morning for 20 years, I've been just going at it. I get tired. But the reward is great. The reward is great. I remember when I, when I surrendered to ministry, and Linnell and I were going through that process, and I was, I, I was a, a young businessman. Uh, I was self-employed. I had everything going for me as the world might see it, but I just knew that God was calling me into ministry, and I surrendered to that. And we were wondering, like, where, where is this going to take us? We have no idea. We just, we just surrendered. We, we just took a step back. We said, we're getting out of business, and we're going to pursue full-time ministry, and we didn't know where it was going to take us, but it landed us in a full-time position as a youth pastor, okay? And so that's where my ministry began. And I remember going in there and trying so hard. You know, I stepped into a youth ministry where uh, the person who was, who was sort of over the ministry was very popular with this group, and so they didn't really like the idea of a new guy coming into the place. And so I was met with opposition right away and, and and I remember just working hard to try to win them over for Jesus and I was pouring into them and I was loving on them to the best of my ability and I, I knew nothing about about ministry I was learning everything as I go and all I knew is how to sell cucumbers and squash because I was a produce broker okay but I was trying hard I was living for Jesus and man I was so excited about ministry and six months later I said I quit I quit. All of my life in the life of the church, I didn't know that church people could be so mean. In all of my life as being just a follower of Christ, I didn't know that church people could be so critical and rude and ugly and unwelcoming. And I had 60 little demons that I was trying to minister to. I mean, they were horrible. And no matter how hard I tried, and no matter what I did, I couldn't win them over. They didn't want anything to do with me. And so I remember I walked into my pastor's office, and I said, Pastor, I said, this is it. I can't do it. He already knew the struggles I was going through. I was five or six months in. I mean, it wasn't long. And I'm like, I'm going back in the produce business, man. I'm going to sell cucumbers. It's easier. And I went in there and I said, I, I, I give up. I'll carry this thing out till we get back from summer camp. But when we get back, I'm out of here. And I'll never forget. He opened up Galatians 6, 9 and 10. He says, I want to read you something. David, you may not know it yet, but you are making a difference in these young people's lives. Do not grow weary in doing good for you will reap I said I can't take it and I'll never forget what he said to me he says you gotta take it when did Jesus ever promise you easy he promised you holy I'm convinced, I'm 100% convinced that if I'd have quit youth ministry when we got back from camp, Cross Point Church wouldn't exist. We wouldn't be sitting here. I don't know where we'd be sitting, but it wouldn't be here. But God had a plan. Amen? He always has a plan. He has a plan. And I think, I think the word for us this morning is that he's not done with us. Amen? He's not done with you. He's not done with me. 
He's not done with any of us. He has a plan. We may not always know that plan, but he is faithful. We were singing about it earlier, amen? He is faithful, and that is reason to continue to pursue the things of God. He's faithful. So you look at this passage and he gives us these sort of three directives, if you will. If you've got to have three things in a poem, here they are, okay? Let us not grow weary. We've talked a lot about that. Let me just say something about growing weary because I know all of us grow weary from time to time. If you feel the sense that you're growing weary, schedule a time of rest. Schedule a time of rest. And I don't mean necessarily physical. That's typically what we think. You know, when we feel tired, we say, I need a nap, right? I'm feeling that right now. <laughs> Having been up since one, I, I'm just, uh, I, I need a nap, right? So I need a nap. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about scheduling a time of spiritual rest. Because I think one of the things that we often give up on when we're tired is God himself he's usually the first to go in our life we start looking at the physical rather than the spiritual and so schedule a time of spiritual rest Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says this Jesus says take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for what not for your bodies for your souls it's got to begin there if you're feeling burnt out, if you're feeling weary, if you're feeling tired, it's got to begin with time with God. Schedule that time with God. And then the other thing I would say is do not overcommit. Some of us have a really difficult time in saying no, right? Some of us just have a really difficult time in saying no. Now let me just say this to those of you who don't have a hard time saying no. And you know where I'm going with this, right? Some of you heard me say don't ever commit, and you see that as permission to just kind of not do anything. Well, let me just tell you, if, if you're burnt out from putting in one or two hours a month here at Cross Point Church, you need to look at your hobbies. You need to look at the things that are taking you away from your family, Amen. You need to look at the extracurricular activities in your life. Those things may be what's burning you out. So schedule some time with God. And don't overcommit. Don't allow so much into your life that you have no time for God and for family and for church. Don't do it. Give something up if you're tired and you're weary. The second directive that he gives us here, and we're almost done, I'm going to ask the band if they'll come on out. But the second directive is this, let us not give up. Isaiah 40, 31 says this, but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Don't give up. I love this passage because it talks about us being able to run and not be weary of running. But it points to the reality that it is the Lord that renews our strength. It's got to be the Lord that renews our strength. And then the last thing that I want to sort of point out here, and we're done, is to just say, let us keep on keeping on. Let us just keep on keeping on and doing good. Verse 10, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially those who are the household of our faith. Paul says, I know you get tired. I know you get weary. I know some of you are exhausted. But Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. And what I
what I love best about what Paul is saying is he says it's not over in fact we're just getting started I don't know how many years from now I'll have to step away from this pulpit but I am convinced of this that this thing will continue on for as long as Jesus wants it to continue on and we have an opportunity oh and, and, and don't get scared I'm, I'm not next week going to resign I mean I, didn't, I don't it's, I, I see everybody looking at each other did he just did he just say he's leaving no I'm not going anywhere I mean it'll be 30 40 years I'm sure I, I'm kidding about that too I'll be 90. Good morning, Cross Point Church, right? With my little walker with the wheels on it, you know? 90 years old? Nah, I don't know. Maybe I'll be teaching the seniors class. I have Nathan with me in there. You'll be in there with me, won't you, Nathan? You come to my seniors class? Ephesians 2.10 says this, For we are his workmanship I want you to hear this now this is where we're, 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 we're done for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God bef prepared beforehand that what that we should walk in them please don't allow the enemy to convince you that you are unworthy to be a part of this congregation do not allow the enemy to convince you, nor the flesh, to say, you don't have a part here. You just come in, and you just sit here, and you just listen to the preacher because you are so unworthy. Because that's not the voice of God. That's either the enemy or your flesh, but that's not the voice of God. While you were yet still sinning, Christ died for you and if he'll save us while we're yet still sinning he'll continue to sanctify us while we're still working through this process amen don't you give up don't you give up don't you give up because Jesus has not give up on you he hasn't don't you quit let's keep going